We've received quite a bit of interest in my free to be workshop. So to that effect, beneath this video is a link that will give you a description for the workshop. And we've also included a special discount. So if that's something you would be interested in, I would invite you to click that link and I hope that you would find the course to be quite beneficial. In every relationship that you have, whether it's inside a family or a marriage or with parenting or social life or organizations or elsewhere, work, we're going to recognize that there's a strong necessity for boundaries. And when I say boundaries, uh, there's an acknowledgement that you're you, I'm me, sometimes we differ, and so we each get to live into our own distinctives and we'll do the best that we can to coordinate with one another as we live out our distinct selves. Okay, that's what healthy relationships start with, good boundaries. Well, you have these individuals in your lives, they're referred to as the narcissistic people that have this real strong, intrusive, <clears throat> controlling, and self, uh, self-absorbed, entitled attitude that they bring to the relationship. And they illustrate over and over that they don't care about boundaries. They care about one thing, and that is me. And there are so many different times when you have to remind these individuals the boundaries of what the boundaries are, and you want to try to uh, get them to go along with that, and yet they just won't. Let me give an illustration, and, and these are all real-life cases. Uh, you have one family that has a single brother-in-law who just keeps inviting himself to various kind of family functions, whether it's the kids' sporting events or let's say there's going to be a, a weekend barbecue. It's like, yeah, he kind of shows up and, and the whole time he's there, he dominates, he's obnoxious, nobody likes him. That's blurred boundaries and it's like, what do, what do we have to do to make this guy go away? <clears throat> or uh, you may have uh, an, an in-law that whenever you're together with them, uh, starts bringing up topics that nobody wants to talk about, whether it's politics or religion or uh, various kinds of things about opinions on how things ought to be in the world. And it's like, shut up, quit it. You, you, we've heard these uh, these arguments over and over and over, quit it. Or you, you may have a coworker and that coworker is kind of known as being the busybody, always trying to pry and find out what are you doing and, and why you're doing it this way. And they want to be your buddy and again, over time, it's like, I don't even want to be in this person's presence. Now, many of you, you, you know that one of my, uh, my notions that I have is I, I don't want to be the kind of person as I engage with these individuals who goes to a place of meanness or rudeness. I, I, I don't want to be that kind of person. And yet, we can ask the question, well, does that mean that I'm just supposed to keep turning the other cheek and letting them get away with all of this obnoxious or inappropriate behavior? No. Or uh, should I just, uh, uh, should I really care heavily about trying to get along with someone who doesn't care about getting along with me? You know, is it just going to be a one-sided thing? No, I don't think that has to be the case. Um, let's underscore that when you deal with these narcissistic individuals, they bring their insecurity to the equation with you. And all of these things, these illustrations that I just mentioned are a part of their insecurity. They, they, they so crave significance that they, uh, they, they overdo it and they don't know when to, to stop and slow down. They certainly don't care about building your significance. Um, they have low empathy. Uh, they don't care about what you feel. They care about what you think about them and then uh, the implications there, but they're, they're not going to be the kind of individuals that coordinate well. They're connivers. And it's always like, well, how do I get my angle here? And I have these things I want to accomplish. How do I get you to go along with me, whether you want to or not? Trying to talk with some individuals like this using insight and, uh, and uh, good reasoning it's just simply not going to work. Now, in healthy relationships, you want to have uh, ways of discussing uh, uh, problems and difficulties with insight, and you would listen to each other, and it would uh, go well. Many times, though, with narcissists, it just doesn't happen. Now, there are times when there's only one approach that you can make with a narcissist as you're trying to establish boundaries, and that's by using the blunt approach. Sometimes you just have to be blunt 
uh, when we're talking about you establishing your boundaries with a narcissist. Now, let's underscore what we talk about when we mean blunt. Uh, often when you think of being blunt with someone, it means that you're forceful or overbearing or rude. That's the way some people take it to mean. And that's not the way I'm looking at it. It's, it's not about rudeness. It is about being uncompromisingly direct and forthright and frank and plain spoken and candid. Sometimes you just have to say, this is the way it is. This is where I'm going to go. And I'm, I'm not going to discuss it any further. Now I'm going to get to that in just a minute, but um, let's suppose, uh, you know, when we ask you, well, when might I need to be blunt? Well, Let's suppose that you have somebody that has a history of being very abusive or disruptive and you try to reason with them. Sometimes you just need to be blunt because it's like, I'm not putting up with that. Or this might be someone that uh, is constantly using pushy and argumentative and insistent communication. I, I recall one guy talking about how he was in a social circle. And there was this one fellow, whenever he was around in the social circle, he would dominate the conversation, overbearing and always right. And, you know, had to uh, have the final word. And finally, this fellow just pulled him aside and said, your opinions are not really uh, uh, welcome in this group. Nobody likes listening to you. And, and his wife would say, you said that to him? It's like I had to pull out my two by four and knock him upside the head. He won't listen to anything else. And I, I just point, point blank said, you know, uh, I, I don't want to be around you if that's the only thing you bring to the equation, that pushy and insistent communication. That's blunt. But sometimes just saying, hey, yeah, I know you've got opinions, but somebody else has theirs. Let's make room for it. Doesn't get through. So sometimes you just have to put it out there. Or it could be that you have someone that has a long-standing history of bringing blame and shame and insults to the equation. And sometimes you get to the point of saying, I'm not putting up with this anymore. Or uh, you have some people that may uh, want to draw you in with sexually inappropriate kind of flirtatious comments, or they talk about some immoral or Ill illegal kind of things, let's say, with respect to drug usage and things like that, or behaviors that you just can't go along with. At some point, it's like, nope, here's where I stand, and I'm not going to be ambiguous about it. Uh, there are some people who are very salesman-like in the way that they engage with folks. I remember you know, years ago, like three or four de or three decades ago, there was this one night guy that kept wanting to sell me some insurance, and I kept telling him no. And finally, I said, I'll tell you what, let's make a deal. If, if I need anything, I'll, I'll give you a call, but right now, I just don't need anything. Well, guess what? Six months later, he calls me and says, well, you remember when you said that uh, that if you needed any kind of insurance, you'd give me a call. And I said, yes, I remember that. He said, well, I take that to mean that you consider me your insurance agent. And he went on with his spiel again. And so I had to point blank say, that's not what I said. That's not what I meant. And I had to be blunt. There are just simply are times when no kind of hinting or suggestions or discussion is going to get through and you have to be blunt. Now, when we talk about being blunt, we're talking about being very unambiguous with respect to establishing your boundaries. Here's what you can do. Here's what you can't do. You know, to that brother-in-law that just keeps inviting himself over to family functions, sometimes you just may need to say, you're not invited and your, your presence is not welcome here. Uh, the last several times that you've been here, you've taken over in a wrong kind of way and it's just not working out. Or you may have that family member that uh, brings arguments about politics, as I mentioned a few minutes ago. And sometimes you may just have to say, because you just keep going back to all of these arguments that none of us want to hear, we're not inviting you the next time, or I'm not coming over to your place, or I don't want to go to dinner with you. Sometimes you just have to say it. And you, uh, you don't have to uh, mince words, you just say it very plain. Um, there may be times when you just have to let it be known, uh, this isn't about you. This is about me. And sometimes when you're blunt, you just simply let it be known. You can be anything you want to be. What I'm talking to you about is what works for me. And your obnoxiousness, you don't necessarily have to use that word, but your mannerisms, your choices don't work for me. And so I'm going to choose not to engage with you. That's blunt. But it, and basically what you're saying is, I need to follow through on what I believe is right. I don't have any kind of uh, belief or trust that you're going to be able to figure out why. Therefore, I'm just going to say, this is what I'm going to do. End of discussion. And then as you have bluntness, 
uh, you want to make sure that you have good follow through. Uh, sometimes, uh, like that salesman, it's like, well, okay, you said that, but I'm going to still come back at you anyway. It's like, no, once I've said it, I'm following through. Uh, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Yes means yes. No means no. And you're going to see not only through my words, but through my behaviors that when I establish my boundary, I mean it. I want you to think about some of the times that you have had these people that just don't catch on to hints or they don't uh, follow through on discussions very well with you and they keep bringing the same time over and over. It may feel a little awkward for you to have to take this blunt approach and keep in mind, it doesn't mean that you have to be mean or rude, but unambiguous, uh, unapologetic straightforwardness, that's what we want to do. <clears throat> We're anchored in, in a couple of thoughts and that is these people are what they are. No discussion, no pleading, no uh, uh, trying to talk things out is going to make it any different. I get it. And then uh, we're also going to make the uh, presumption that says reasoning doesn't work. And so when that's the case, okay, I'll, I'm going to stop reasoning. And then you uh, follow through with one final thought, and that is from here on out, coordination with you, narcissist, is not my primary concern. Self-preservation is my primary concern. That's how we want to establish boundaries. And if they can't engage with you in a, an adult way, you just simply lay it down and then you live it out. Now, I wish it weren't this way, <clears throat> but there it is. Uh, if a uh, video such as this kind of spurs some good thought and you'd like to have more, we'd invite you to hit that subscribe button and stick with us. And there's a, uh, once you hit that subscribe, you hit that uh, bell for notifications. Uh, in addition, we have uh, a private membership now with our channel where you're uh, once a week, uh, I, and then another time, Laura, we have live feeds with Q and A, <clears throat> or we're able to address issues of this nature, of a different nature. And then we're also gonna be in, uh, providing uh, other videos that are gonna not be for public consumption, but just for our membership. It's only $7 a month. Uh, and click that join button and see if uh, you'd be interested in that. If you have a need for counseling, uh, we've vetted a group that can provide online counseling right now. That's very popular and you may need help uh, getting somebody to look at this with you and see if you can come up with some better strategies for man maintaining your boundaries. In addition, we have my free to be workshop and it's, it's not just a workshop. It's a full extensive course uh, that takes you through uh, a, a whole lot of different guided uh, teachings and lessons uh, with a lot of questions and personal introspection. You might want to check that out and see if that would be something that you would benefit from. So sometimes you have to just put it out there, lay it down. And when you have this very direct uh, way of doing things, it's your way of saying, I believe enough in me that if you over there think that it's uh, uh, appropriate for you to uh, run over me and show complete disregard for me, I have news for you. That doesn't work. I care enough about my own well-being that I will let you know, here's who I am. This is what I stand for. I'm not backing down. Steadiness and self-confidence. That's what I'm hoping you can stand upon.